Good evening, good evening. I'm Lucinda Gabriel, and tonight we are October 31st, Halloween, 2021. And so tonight I have a, a very um, special message, I think, uh, that God wants me particularly to share with you because I was going to talk about persecution. So that will be coming up in the next week or so. But anyway, tonight, uh, the Lord woke me up a few days ago. It was Wednesday night, I think. And he specifically told me that babies, newborn babies, you know, we've had, I think, nearly 50 baptisms since the, the beginning of August. It's been three months, and it's just been amazing. And so the Lord put it on my heart that these babies were suffering. They were being uh, spiritually attacked by the enemy and so uh, he put it on my heart anyway that I needed to pray for them and I also need to teach about how to ward off the enemy so that's what my topic is tonight and I pray that it blesses you that it gives you you know many great tools to help you uh, ward off the enemy in your own life so um, some believers may be tempted to say, well, Cinda, you know, these are just babies. You don't, you can't burden them too much. You know, I've been told this in the past, but you know, I know what I lived when I was uh, baptized and it was hard. So I really feel that, you know, uh, as soon as somebody is born into the kingdom, they need to know that they are in a war. You know, if you think of a kingdom back at, you know, like the, those movies, um, you would see the king, and the king, he had his his um, his army. Well, when you're born into God's kingdom, you're part of His army, so you need to be trained up real quickly in fighting. And so this is this is what it's all about. And so I had a really big fight after I was baptized for about forty eight hours, and and that was like really big. But then it, it continues for the rest of your life. So you know, and I honestly think if you're not being spiritually attacked if you're not suffering you're not doing it right <laughs> you know so i'll get into that a little bit more in this video but um that's it i discovered really quickly after i was baptized that you know this spiritual world i mean i knew it was real but i mean it was a lot more real than it had ever been and uh, i was in literally for the fight of my life okay and so I know if you're out there and you're suffering, I know what you're going through. And so I pray that many of you that are listening that are not yet believers, that uh, you might come to see that there is really an invisible supernatural world that exists all around us and that these demons are after your very soul. And I, I really hope that you, you see that in your own life. And I mean, the proof of that is that everybody is addicted to something. And so there's, there's like I said, this battle going on for your soul daily. And if Satan can take you out before you find the truth, he will be happy. And that's his objective. He wants people to die without finding the truth of Jesus. And, uh, and that's why he brings so many people into depression and uh, try to get them to kill themselves. And if, they, if he doesn't succeed at that, and I've told you this before and in another video, he'll give you the, you know, your, the, the life of your dreams. He'll make all your dreams come true. You'll have the perfect house and the perfect car and the perfect job and everything. And when it comes time to die, he's like, well, you've got to live, the, you, you know, you have to die the perfect death. And so he's going to convince you to get euthanasia, which is like legal now, right? That's why everything is being pushed right now because... It's the last push for Satan right now. I mean, if you don't understand that we're in the end times, uh, you're going to find out pretty quickly in the next, I would say, six months to a year, you're going to see how things are going to change. So anyway, like we are on the precipice of all of this. It's going, the world is going to get very dark pretty soon. And you will believe me by then if you don't believe me now that there is an evil agenda going on right now. It's Satan's last chance, last chance to take you with him. And so I'm just trying to warn people and get you trained up. If you're born again and you've just been baptized and or maybe you maybe you don't know how to 
fight off the enemy and you're suffering well this is the objective of my video to share with you my personal experience and to um, give you tools that you can use as well so like I said Satan's agenda is to take you home with him okay and um, and the Bible says that unless you are in Christ you are veiled so most people can't even see it until the Lord begins to show them that this supernatural world exists and you got to want to see the truth and to find it okay so this is what the Bible says about Satan it says in first Peter 5 8 stay alert watch out for your great enemy the devil he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour so that's that's the devil and he's demons and um, as long as you are not yet truly born again because some people think they are but they're not truly born again you're actually living in Satan's world and Satan has a hold on you and you don't know it Satan is the one that makes you sin he keeps you a slave to sin and he makes you believe it is okay and that it is all good with God but it's not Satan is a liar and the Bible actually says that he's the father of lies in John 8 44 the Bible talks about two kingdoms the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light and so in Colossians 1 this was written to born-again believers for he God has rescued us us who are born again he rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son which is the kingdom of light who purchased our freedom with the blood and forgave our sins so when you're not born again you are living in the kingdom of darkness so when you're born you're born into the kingdom of darkness and that's why Jesus said you need to be born again in you know to to see the kingdom of God to enter the kingdom of God you have to be born again because when we're first born we're born into that kingdom of darkness so you see that it's through Jesus that we pass from one kingdom to the other now if you are born again just because you have passed from one kingdom to the other doesn't mean that you will not suffer attacks from the enemy on the contrary Satan will stir uh, will try to trip you up and make you sin he knows that sin separates us from God and then Satan will condemn and accuse you you know he's so so sly and you know before I was born again I was a smoker and Satan would say things like oh a good cigarette would be good you know like right about now you know after dinner or in the morning with your coffee and then when I went outside the smoke he would condemn me saying you can't let go of it can you you're such a hypocrite trying to pretend you're so perfect but here you are smoking oh you poor girl and this is you know I would hear this kind of talk in my head and I'm sure all of you uh, hear the same kind of negative talk going on in your head as well about whatever it is yours are doing in sin so you see that he leads you into the sin and then he accuses you and it condemns you when you actually do it you know it says in the Bible that he's actually the accuser so after I was baptized I lived a very very big attack for 48 hours and um, and it was very very difficult so it was so bad that I reached out to Oliver who baptized me and I asked well where's the honeymoon and he said the wedding will come later you know like the anyway in the Bible it talks about there there's a wedding at the end right we're still waiting for that wedding feast and he says you didn't get married you just had a funeral and he said baptism is burying the old dead man that we were after we repented from our sins so it's a burial and the enemy gets really mad because he just lost a soul in his kingdom and that's why there's such a battle <clears throat> as soon as you get baptized because the enemy is really angry that he just lost you and that's it you're gone right and so he tries to keep you from the truth and then when you finally like get baptized well then he's, he's mad because you're gone so that's why the angels also say that angels the Bible says that angels rejoice in heaven over one sinner who repents you know and so when I was baptized it was on a Tuesday July 10th and in my mind I would have preferred actually to have been baptized on my birthday on the 14th it was just a few days you know after that but anyway Oliver was going to be away so it was impossible to 
you know, to uh, be baptized on that day. But the devil used that information to torment me. Just, you know, so you know that he's going to use whatever it is to torment you right after you're baptized. This is the things that he said. Oh, they rushed you into it. Oh, you're just another notch in their belt. Oh, and tongues aren't real. And, and it was like lies upon lies upon lies that he would just, you know, tell me. And just trying to bring me into doubt and make me angry and, uh, you know, make me question, you know, was it the right thing? And, you know, is this real? And, I mean, the attack was, like, really severe. And you don't realize it. Like, I didn't realize it right away that this is the devil. You know, like, you just, like, all these thoughts are going through your mind really fast. And you almost think that it's yourself. And it's not until you understand how the devil works that you realize, like, okay, no, 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 this, this is not me. Because there's my thoughts and there's God's, you know, uh, talking to me and there's also the enemy. So my big struggle at the time was smoking. And, um, and you know, because I remember that afternoon they came over and we talked. And after about, I don't know, three hours, it seemed like I was, like, really, really wanting to have a cigarette. They're like, no, 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 let us pray for you. And I'm like, no, I just really want a cigarette. And uh, and so they, like, they really wanted to pray. I'm like, okay, pray for me. But, you know, like, that urge was so strong and it was there. And so... You know, I didn't want to smoke, but at the same time, you know, I, I enjoyed smoking. You know, there was something about it. I was a slave to it, right? Like everybody else is a slave to something. And I was also ashamed of it. I was ashamed about being a smoker. You know, it was just like just dirty cigarettes. But anyway, that's how the devil gets us, right? And so it was the only thing also that kept me healthy because I was suffering from ulcerative colitis, if you didn't know that. It's a very serious bowel disease. And smoking was the only thing that, you know, kind of kept me in peace. And no medication ever worked. And anyway, after 10 years of suffering, when I started smoking again after 10 years, like the sickness went away. And as soon as I would try to stop smoking, it would come back. So anyway, that afternoon, the man prayed over me about the smoking before my baptism. And then afterwards, while well, I tried to stop immediately, and, but I just had this rage to smoke and it was so bad that it was nothing like I had ever experienced before. And it lasted for like 24 hours. I mean, I really could have chewed somebody up and spit them out. That's how I was like, I was just so like in a rage. And um, anyway, after 24 hours, I broke down and I went and bought a pack of cigarettes. And then I was standing by the building outside and I was smoking it. And I could feel all the pain come back in my body from my toes and my ankle that I had sprained like a few years before, like the pain came back. Then it was in my little finger. I had arthritis in my fingers. I could feel that coming back in. And then I started to cry because I felt like I had just undone the miracle that I had received, the healing I had received in my baptism. And so I was crying and I just like I was saying to the, you know, the devil and these dirty demons. I'm like, okay, you might have won the battle, but you didn't win the war, you know. And so I was I was upset. But uh, anyway, I smoked for 24 hours. And then the next day I went down by the water and, uh, and I spoke to the Lord and I said, Lord, I want to follow you. I want to follow you, but you're going to have to take it all. You're going to have to take you know, the smoking, you're going to have to heal my body. And because I just can't do this anymore. And so when I walked away from the water, the, the river where I was, I threw the cigarettes out in the garbage can and I never looked back and it was over. It was over just like that. So I was actually healed from the colitis for six months and, uh, and it didn't come back. And I prayed to God, um, after six months, it came back, and I was in Florida at the time, and the Lord revealed to me that I had taken offense. Somebody was, uh, let's just say, not nice towards me, and uh, and I was offended. I was hurt, <clears throat> and, and that offense took root, and that's where uh, it opened up the door for this sickness to come back. And so the Lord told me what it was. I forgave the person, and, and you know, I worked that out in my heart. And so it got better, but it wasn't perfect. And then finally, I don't know, maybe about four or five months later, I was over in Belgium and I got up one morning. I was like, okay, today's the day. I, I can't do this anymore. I can't be sick anymore. 
and I went out for a walk and I walked around this um, soccer field and it was, took like an hour to walk around this anyway this place and while I walked around I rebuked the devil and I chased him off with Bible verses and I told him how big my God was and I praised Jesus and I sang to him and I just kept rebuking him and I just kept repeating this you know Bible verses about like by his stripes I'm healed and you go right now in the name of Jesus and I just like really rebuked him for a full hour and I would just praise you know praise God and I did this for three days in a row one hour a day and then on the third day I came back and it was over it was done and I've been I've been perfect since it's been over two years so praise God that's how I fought my battles okay so know that the devil will try everything to keep you away from the truth of Jesus Christ you know if you haven't found the truth yet or if you're not quite sure if you want to believe yet the devil is trying to keep you away and he will tell you lies about believers even your own family members he will try to stop you from seeing them he will discourage you keep you busy keep you occupied you know I've noticed in my own life he tells me lies about sometimes it's the truth too I suppose but sometimes there's lies you know it's like oh no that person wouldn't want to see you or oh, that person doesn't want to hear talk about Jesus and the little lies in my head that he tells me and we have to be very mindful all the time about what's going on in our head you know it says in the Bible take every thought captive because not all our thoughts are our own you know they're from the devil and some of them are from the Lord so we have to be really paying attention to know which one is which and so he's gonna to try to stop you from seeing people he's gonna to try to discourage you from sharing the gospel and he's certainly gonna keep you busy and occupied and distracted and entertained to death okay now if you haven't noticed that like turn off your televisions cut off your Netflix read the New Testament like Jesus told me to do and it will change your life you will find the truth and you'll be at peace because if you stop listening to to especially what's going on in the news and that like you you will find peace and Jesus came to bring us peace so whatever it takes to keep you away from knowing the truth that Jesus is the Messiah that's what Satan is trying to keep you away from the truth Messiah you know Jesus who gave his life for you to save you from your sins and consequently save you from everlasting torment in hell which is reserved for the devil and his demons and so you have to know that there's this fight going on for your soul so as soon as you find the truth about Jesus and take that next step to get baptized Satan will try to get you off track right away by bringing you into confusion and doubt he will tell you lies about the people who baptized you he will try to make you believe that it wasn't good he will bring you into confusion and doubt he will know exactly what button to push because he has been observing you for years and you know Satan's all about division he's always dividing dividing look at the church today the churches denominations the they're all divided they're all divided and um, and you know what comes to mind when I say that is uh, Jesus said a kingdom divided cannot stand and so those denominations are di that are divided they will not stand and they're not the the church of Jesus Christ you know and I know some people will be insulted that I even say that but I'm telling you when you read the Bible for yourself um, it's Jesus said to Peter he says he asked him you know and I'm going off topic a little bit here because I don't know I just feel it's important um, he asked he asked his disciples who do they say I am and Peter said you're 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 the Messiah the Son of God and Jesus looked at him he said Peter you couldn't know this he said this was revealed to you by the Father only the Father could reveal this and Peter on this rock I will build my church and so that means that the rock on which the church is built is not Peter like the Catholic Church says it's the revelation of who Jesus Christ really is it's the people that are the stones the people are the stones uh, and the people that had the revelation 
of the truth of Jesus Christ. That is the real church. That is the real rock on which the church is built. So buildings don't matter. Okay, Denominations don't matter. The only thing that really matters is that we, you, received the truth, the revelation about the identity of Jesus Christ. That he is the Son of God, Christ the Messiah, that died for you on the cross. That's all that matters. Right, so I'm just saying this is what God is putting in my heart right now, and like I said, it's not even part of my message that a kingdom divided will not stand. And I believe that's a warning to any of you out there that are that are standing with these buildings. Bear in mind that these buildings will not stand. Okay. Anyway, you need to get close to God. That's what I'm trying to say to. So. The Bible says that Satan is out to steal, kill, and destroy. And a brother was sharing with me the other night about how he came to join our community of believers. And he was in a church for nearly three years. And I had met him over two years ago. And I strongly suggested that he meet Oliver and see how life amongst our group of believers really is and how it was different than what he was living going to church every Sunday and Bible study every Wednesday night you know and um, and I just really wanted him to experience the real life that we're supposed to live and so he was recounting the first day that he met them you know the group in the park and they were baptizing four people right there in the park in the river there was deliverance going on prayers for healing and the children were running around and everybody was singing and rejoicing over these new believers and he had never experienced anything like this before it was like to him it was wild it was like wow like this is like living in the book of acts so it was really exciting and then a few months after this he called me to tell me all about it and he was like really excited and i remember him telling me that he says i'm so attacked and I was like, praise God, hallelujah. That means that you found the truth. Because really, that's when I know when somebody's really found the truth. If they're really attacked and they're really suffering, praise God. It says in the Bible to rejoice. Rejoice. And so, you know, if, um, if you're not doing God's work and, uh, you know, the devil, he doesn't care if you read the Bible. He cares if you, if you live it. See, that's the difference. So anyway, praise God that, you know, he was uh, suffering. And he was suffering very real and very physical attacks as well. And he told me that the night before he performed his first baptism, he was driving down the street and he witnessed this car just swerving around him. And it was like raining really hard. And this car was just like lost control. And it was just like swerving all around. And it ended up like kind of riding, you know, along the cement wall before you know going off in an exit and he was like really shaken by this but it was like wow like almost as if the enemy was trying to uh you know take him out or shake him before before he got you know to do this baptism the next day so you know like i was saying satan doesn't bother people who read the bible but he despises those who dare to live it out because those who are working in the harvest are bringing souls into god's kingdom and we are making a big dent in the kingdom of darkness so the devil hates that so like I've been saying for the past three years if you're not being spiritually attacked if you're not persecuted which is an upcoming subject like I said you're not living the real disciple life that we are meant to live okay and you really want to question that and read like I said the Lord put it on my heart to tell you this what was it last week he said read the gospels and take it literally we're supposed to believe it all not bits and pieces all of it all of it and i know like if you read it like i read it and just believed it all your life would be transformed you would not be living a lot of you the life that you're actually living just saying so the more you are a threat to the enemy the more you will be attacked we are supposed to be a threat to the devil that's our role so let's look at what spiritual warfare really is and who's behind it. Well, it's the devil, of course, and the devil, uh, you know, Lucifer, he was put out of the heavens with one third of the angels who followed him. And these fallen angels are the ones that are attacking you. 
In Ephesians chapter 6, we read, it says, Be strong in the Lord, and it is mighty power. Put on all God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. Now, it didn't say to fight, but it said to stand firm against all the strategies. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. So we're not fighting against people, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. So if you don't know this, this is important. It's the unseen world against mighty powers in the dark world and against evil spirits in heavenly places. That's where our fight is. And in 2 Corinthians 12, Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So how does Satan attack us? Well, continues um, 2 Corinthians 10. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning. So Satan attacks us, you know, with these strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. So um, we are supposed to use our weapons to destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. So this all happens in prayer, taking down the strongholds, breaking down the proud obstacles that keep people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. So we do all our fighting in prayer. You see, the biggest battleground is our mind. Satan builds strongholds and fortresses in our mind. And how does he do that? Well, prejudice, preconceptions. You know, we have ideas of certain people, ideas of certain things. And Satan knows exactly which buttons to push. So he knows where our soft spots are. And so he knows exactly which buttons. He also attacks our body. And that's why, you know, sometimes illnesses that were, um, were healed in the baptism can come back. And don't believe it and don't accept it. You know, you, you have to fight that off and say, no, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command this to stop right now. All pain go right now in the name of Jesus because by his stripes I am healed. That's what it says. You have to stand on those promises to stand on the, on the healing. Okay, And sometimes we need other people to pray for us because it's not always easy to pray for ourselves. So Satan will attack your mind and he will also attack your body. And some people suffer terrible physical attacks, debilitating physical attacks that keep them bedridden. And you must learn to fight the devil. And you know what's, what's sad is that there's, well, there's some teachings out there, I guess, on, on YouTube now, like Derek Prince has uh, like a lot of good teachings on that. But um, I, I think in, a, in some churches anyway that I've, that I've heard of, you know, there's, there's none of that. It's always like kumbaya and, you know, talking about the goodness of God and abundance and all that, but there's no solid meat, you know, no fear of God and no, you know, spiritual warfare going on. Well, and maybe because they're not attacked, I suppose. So, I mean, that might explain why. Anyway, in our family, the devil will turn your family against you, your friends against you. He's also going to attack your loved ones that are dearest to you. So if you're out working, you know, in, in, the, in the harvest, like our, uh, I know that's what he did in my family. Um, you know, I, I noticed that he would attack my mom. I'm something Every time I was out doing something, something would happen. She would fall down or anyway, something was going on with my mom. And I would just pray against it. You know, I'm like, no, in the name of Jesus, you're going to stop this right now. And I would pray for my mother's health that she wouldn't be affected about, you know, whatever it was that happened while I was away. And it was a constant battle. And we should be praying. So if you're a believer and you have like, you know, other you know, brothers and sisters that are out in the field and they're working, you need to be praying for them. You know, like when we go away to do a kickstart weekend, for example, you need to pray for us. So uh, to protect us and protect our families because our families get attacked while we're away as well. So that's really important. Um, so don't forget that the people you love are not your enemy. And that's really important because the devil, he's so conniving. He's going to tell you lies in your head. Look, look, look what this one said. Listen to what she said, you know, blah, blah, blah. 
and like your spouse your uh, you know your your children it's going to use them against you and so you need to go in the prayer closet you know and just fight off the devil and his demons and don't let him and them uh, steal your peace of mind or your peace in the home and so uh what came to me as i was preparing this message you know to fight off the enemy well be sure to close all doors to him and that means look around your house do you have anything anything that would open a door any new age books any uh, any new age stuff i mean angels or crystals or or anything that could open up a door or might have left a door open to him you need to make sure <clears throat> excuse me that your whole house is purified completely do not sin do not let the devil lead you into sin because sin separates you from god forgive everyone everything because unforgiveness is sin and especially don't take offense pray for your enemies bless those who persecute you be impeccable with your word with your actions be blameless be harmless be harmless as a dove it says be wise be holy and perfect uh, be irreproachable and show a good example that way the devil has no hold on you okay so i i believe that all those things are uh, like a kind of a, a resume of what I'm going to talk about you know how to fight the devil those were the ways to fight the devil and if we go to Ephesians chapter 6 where it talks about the whole armor of God uh, that is what it was that was what it was about so it says uh, finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts and wickedness in the heavenly places, which is all that I just read to you. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. So to withstand means to stand firm right so stand therefore having girded your waist with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere so what is the belt of truth well the belt of truth means to stand firm in the truth of god don't compromise or water down the gospel be impeccable with your word be truthful to others and walk the talk walk the talk so you know the bible says one thing this is what you're supposed to do you don't go against it because people are watching people are watching all the time they're like uh you know and i've heard this many times i mean people that are not believers will say oh well look at this you know this one so and so you know he's doing this and the bible says you shouldn't do it i mean they don't know everything they haven't read it for themselves but they do know enough sometimes to see when a, a christian is you know not walking the talk okay so you need to be uh, you need to have integrity that's the right word you need to have integrity so that to me is the belt of truth as well the breastplate of righteousness through Christ we are made righteous so we have that righteousness through Jesus Christ also protect your heart because that's the breastplate of righteousness it protects your heart be careful not to take offense because taking offense is um is a sin unforgiveness is a sin um righteousness actually means to be without sin so we protect our heart when we resist sin like anger and bitterness and unforgiveness be especially loving to everyone love covers a multitude of sin so put on the breastplate of righteousness which is love and faith 
Shoes of peace, you need to be able to share the good news of Jesus Christ through your actions and also your speech. So not only do you need to be able to share the good news, you know, speak it out. If you haven't learned how to do that, I do have a video. Uh, just look up um, the true gospel. The true gospel, you'll find that how to share, you know, the true gospel. And so make sure that you're walking the talk, like I said. You know, so you can share the gospel in your actions. Like some people would say, sometimes you're the only Bible somebody's going to read. And so your, um, your actions are going to speak loud. The shield of faith, to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. So, you know, the shield is what you hold out, you know, to stop the, the fiery darts. Our faith shields us from our... Um, from the devil and also shields our family we need to be strong in our faith and be quick to rebuke the devil when these darts come at us we need to see it we need to recognize it and we need to rebuke it right away so the helmet of salvation protects our mind and this is where Satan attacks us the most by negative thoughts and depression and um, he beats us down in our mind but hope Hope of our salvation is the antidote. Okay, so we need to put on the helmet of salvation, which is hope. First Thessalonians 5 8 says, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. And lastly, the sword of God. And it says, The sword is the word of God. Our ultimate weapon is the word of God. Just like Jesus used the word to fight off Satan in the desert, we are also to use the word of God as well to fight him off. And so, you know, we speak these, uh, these uh, verses out loud. No weapon formed against me will prosper, and by his stripes I am healed. And we say them with authority because we've been given authority through Jesus Christ to rebuke the devil, and he will flee, right? So, uh... I'm going to finish off with some weapons that, you know, I believe that are most, um, most useful. So you put on the armor of God, and but you also have a, a list of weapons that are really useful. And so this is what I found useful for me. So first of all, one of our weapons is submitting to God. So submitting to God means to do God's will. To be obedient when the Holy Spirit speaks to us and says, do this, you do it right away. You don't question, you just do it. And you put aside your own desires because we, we're supposed to die to ourselves. You know, Jesus died for us, we are supposed to die for him. So that means we put away our own desires, whatever it is we think we want in this life. It's not important. Nothing matters in this life except for winning souls for the kingdom of God. Okay, so put aside our own desires. That's what it means to be completely submitted to God. We do His will, we're obedient, and that way the devil has no hold on us. So we resist the devil, so we're not tempted to sin, and then he will flee. Okay, so if we sub that's a, a Bible verse. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Second, fasting. Fasting is very, very powerful because it makes us strong in the Lord. And so fasting is an excellent tool to, to ward off the devil because we spend that time in the Word. We spend that time with the Lord and praying to Him. Uh, speaking of the Word, um, the Word of God is also our weapon because it says in the arm of God, the sword is the Word of God. So we fight with a sword. So we Fight with the Word of God, and that's where we use the Bible verses to um, to rebuke the devil. And that's what Jesus did when he was in the desert for forty days. Okay, use the Word of God to rebuke the devil. Praying in tongues is another wonderful tool, and that everyone should have. And if you don't have it, you need to reach out to someone that can pray for you to have it. And you know, it's part of the Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit. You, it should be overflowing, and when it overflows out of you, when the Holy Spirit overflows, it should overflow in the gift of tongues. And so when you use your gift of tongues, it really rebukes the devil, 
and makes them flee. I mean, we've seen it like in gatherings that we've done and places we've been. We were just praying in tongues and people would just start manifesting demons. The demons would just come out because we were praying in tongues. And that's how strong it is. So it's a really, really powerful weapon. And uh, after that, take every thought captive. That's what it says. Take every thought captive. So pay attention to your thoughts. Are they your own thoughts? Is it the devil? Is it the Lord? Whose thoughts are they? Okay, so take everyone captive, submit it to the Lord and say, okay, what is this? And so very important to recognize the vice of the evil one. Renew your mind. So don't be negative and do not sin in your mind. Uh, it says in Romans 12 too, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. So renew your mind constantly and do not let anything negative ever come in again. So you have to be very vigilant about your mind. Communion. Communion is, a, to me, I, I, I call it a powerful weapon because when you uh, have communion, you, you repent to God for your sins. And so as soon as you're humble and you're repenting to God, the devil has no hold on you. Okay, so there again, like he, he loses his grip when you do communion. And so repenting to God keeps the evil one away. And it also, uh, when you confess your sins and you're repenting, it relieves you from sickness as well. Because it says that if you're sick, confess your sins to one another and pray for each other, right? So we know that sickness is related to sin. So if you confess and you repent from your sins, take communion. Communion is like, um, it's like to me, it's like, I don't know, I don't like to use the word medication, but it does heal us, right? Kind of like medication does. So communion is a powerful weapon. Um, also declarations. Declare God's promises over your life. Like, for example, by his stripes, I am healed. I declare it over my life, over my body right now that I am healed in the name of Jesus, right? No weapon formed against me will prosper. And so you, you find these Bible verses and you can do a, a search on the Internet. And, uh, you know, Bible verses for, I don't know, say depression, for fear, whatever. And you'll get like all the verses and you just use them. They're your weapons, right? And you just use them, like declare them over your life. So after that, praise God. Praise God. Uh, recount all the wonderful things the Lord has done for you. And say, Lord, I know you've done this for me before. I know you can do it again. And um, one thing that I didn't put here and just popped into my mind. Yes, Lord, thank you. Um so yeah, praise God all day long. Give him praise for everything he does. Glorify him all the time. Uh, glorify. Glorify God. Oh, glorify. And worship. Worship God and you know in in uh, in truth and love and also in in song. Worship God. Journal, write things down. And write down all that God speaks to you and what you experience and how you overcame because it's good to go back and see, okay, God has done this for me before. He can do it for me again. Okay. And last but not least, prayer. Prayer. Pray incessantly over everything. It says it in the Bible. Pray about everything. And so go to the Lord all the time in prayer. So these are amazing, amazing weapons that you have against the enemy. So if you're suffering after being baptized or even if it's been a few years and you're still, you know, struggling because I mean it's been 3 years for me and I'm there's still there's always going to be a battle, especially because you know I'm really busy in the harvest and the more we're busy, the more uh the evil one, you know, is going to attack us. But we have to keep our weapons there in the front of our mind. So we need to be doing these things to just be fighting him off all the time. You know, we rebuke the devil and he will flee. And so, anyway, so I hope this was very helpful for you. Now, uh, Wednesday, this Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, Eastern there's going to be a, a Bible Discipleship Foundations group online. 
one hour theory, one hour practical. So we have a, a nice little group, but if there's a few people out there, there's still a few places left. If you want to join, uh, just write me a private message and let me know. But it's going to be very good and very, very practical. And so I hope this blessed you. And so I want to just uh, thank you for listening. And uh, we'll see you again soon, God willing. All right. God bless you. Good night.